Hey everyone, I picked up this portable hard drive on Prime Day last year because it was a great value for the size, which I picked up in 5 terabyte capacity, and for the pretty good read and write speeds. It's advertised to be a gaming drive, but don't let the name fool you, it's just another external portable hard drive with still a spinning disk, not an SSD, but with a little higher than average read and write speeds. It's formatted out of the box to work well with PlayStation, Xbox, as well as the PC, but it'll also work with Mac with a little bit of formatting. I would recommend the EXFAT format if you want to use this between Mac and PCs. So that's the gist of this drive. Let's go ahead and crack open the box. So starting off with the paperwork, which is just an expanded pamphlet for the instruction manual as well as some terms and conditions and warranty information. And you get a detachable USB type A cable with the older USB type B connection. I do like that the connection location is a little bit more inset to the drive, so it'll prevent any unnecessary disconnections or bumps. Cable length is pretty standard at around 16 inches long. The drive itself does have four little rubber feet that will help prevent slippage on a smooth surface, which I like to see. First impressions of the drive is that it's sturdy and well built, especially with the nice top cover made out of metal. It has a more industrial look and feel to it because it is advertised again to be a gaming drive. It is a little bit on the thicker side at 0.7 inches thick, but it doesn't look so because of the tapered edges. The width is just shy of 3.5 inches and the length is about 4.65 inches. Given that this is a 5 terabyte size drive, it's actually pretty compact for the capacity it holds, especially in comparison with my 2 terabyte WD Elements drive that I bought several years ago. It's still able to fit into my previous portable hard drive case no problem. Though interesting enough, in comparison with another 5TB hard drive that I have by Seagate, this one actually comes in a little bit lighter at 234 grams. For just the drive itself, add on the cable, it's now 255.8 grams, or 9.02 ounces. One particular feature I really like about WD drives is their build quality, especially around the connection point between the cable and the actual drive. For portable drives, and especially for gamers who might be constantly bumping this around, it's extremely important that the connection point is secure and resistant to movement. And I'm happy to report that the cable connection is very strong, requiring quite a bit of force to disconnect it from the actual drive, especially in comparison to other drives that I previously owned, such as Seagate drives. Plugging into the computer, the LED light lights up, notifying that it has a solid connection. The speed of its pulsing depends on how heavy or light the workload is. Heavier it is, the faster it will blink. But one thing I did notice is that even though it is ready to reject from my computer, the light still remains on. I would prefer that it would turn off completely as another visual cue when it has unmounted from my system and ready to eject. Like what my Seagate Backup Plus drive does. And I have noticed that with this drive, and probably just because it is a larger 5TB drive, I find that it takes longer if not prevents it from being ejected even though I'm not reading or writing files to it. Which can be annoying at times when I just want to hurry up and unplug the device. But speaking of read and write speeds, when it was brand new, it was able to achieve read and write speeds at just 100, 120 megabytes per second, which is just a little shy of its advertised 130 megabytes per second. However, a year later, with quite a number of files, over half of its capacity used, it's now reading and writing at just under 50 megabytes per second. While this number may seem drastically low, keep in mind that this is still a spinning hard drive and it's known to deteriorate over a period of time, especially after constant reading and writing to the disk. And just for reference, I did use the 5 gigabyte stress test on both tests. But overall, I don't regret buying this drive. It's been a really solid performer with no data corruption issues whatsoever. And it has been able to run relatively cool despite its black color. For a time, I was editing straight off this drive. But over time, because of the slower speeds, I decided to just edit natively on the SSD hard drive in my computer and then offload those files after I'm done editing. So if you're not willing to pay those SSD prices yet, this is still a good contender for a spinning hard drive. And if you can find it at a price under $100 for this 5 terabyte version, which is what I managed to snag, it's a great backup drive as long as you're not using it for editing. 